Who's able to deliver? Oh, I'm glad I'm serving God. Who's able to defend? Well, I'm glad I'm serving God. Who hears me when I'm praying? I'm glad I'm serving God. On whom I can't depend. I'm glad I'm serving God. Who's able to deliver? Well, I'm glad I'm serving God. Who's able to defend? Yes, I'm glad I'm serving God. Here's me when I'm praying, I'm glad I'm serving God, on whom I can't depend. Amen. Well, good morning, everybody. I think I got a crazy thing in for Hello, Jenny. Oh. <laughs> you catch it. All right. Well, Sister Mary, you ready? Yeah. You want my dog? Yes, you can't hold it and hold the Bible at the same time. Maybe she can. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some don't slacken, but is long suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Amen. Amen. Ask you. We ask you that you get what you want us to do out of this service. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Washed in the blood of the Lamb, do you 
rest each moment in the crucified. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Somebody say, are you washed in the blood? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? When the bridegroom cometh, will your robe be white? Your and white is the blood of the Lamb. Will your souls be ready for the mansion bright? And be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Sing it with me, are you washed? In the blood, in the soul, cleansed blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless, are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Beside the garments that are stained with sin, can be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Is going for the soul unclean, for oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. One last time, are you washed in the blood? In the soul, cleansed in the blood of the Lamb. Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? I have found his praise is all complete. 
on the mountain where the sun shines so bright. That leaves his dead children. The song sometimes through the water. Sing with me, sing, Lord. 
never offered Our victories without fighting But he said hell would always come in time So remember, remember Just remember where you're standing In the valley of decision
Amen, amen, amen. I know you can. Yes, Lord. I know you will. Yes, Lord. Fight my battle if I just keep still. Lord, be a fence all around me every day. Come on, Pastor. Jesus, be a fence all around me every day. I want you to protect me. Jesus, I want you to protect me as I journey along the way. opportunity to come together and worship you and magnify you. And Lord, as we do that this morning, we give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. Lord, because who you are and Lord, what you are doing. And Father, right now, we, we just right now come before your throne. And Lord, we begin to praise and worship and repent before you as we bring ourselves to you this morning as an offering. And Lord, as we bring ourselves as an offering, that you would completely transform us into who we need to be through your Spirit. And Father, we just give you glory, honor, and praise for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen? I'm excited this morning. I want to do a couple announcements real quick. Um, number one, June 10th, right? June 10th. Monday, June is uh, kids' camp. Is that, no, July 10th. I'm sorry. July 10th is, ugh. If I don't write things down anymore. July 10th is our, our kids' camp, ages 8 through 12. And we're still working on getting some information. We're waiting for a phone call, return phone call for some of you. Um, and then July 17th is our junior senior high camp, which is uh, going to be an exciting time for them. Yeah, amen. Uh, so that's what I want to say. How many of you enjoyed Thursday night? Yeah. With, with, you know, uh, you missed it if you, you weren't here. But now, here's the news. It's on video. Ken's coming back. What? Okay. We, we, Ken had a great time. I met with him last night for a little while and on some things. And uh, he is totally connected with, with this area. And uh, we, we're making arrangements to try to get him back in this area every three to four months. And uh, that's, it's kind of tough. And uh, we, we've talked to him about that and he's prayed about it and we believe that that's going to come about and some good things there. So if you missed him last time, be with him. Great, great, great guy um, to have. So want to remind you of June 4th, okay? June 4th is a kind of a celebration here. Uh, Pastor Bill Black will be with us to celebrate our 30 years from here. Um, being here in Iowa City and 40 years in ministry. That's scary. Amen. You know, uh, maybe they'll give me my retirement papers and shoot me out the door. I don't know. Yeah, 40 years in ministry. <laughs> Pretty scary, isn't it? Uh, so we want to uh, let you know that uh, that's going to be a good time. And uh, depending on people, if they can get back from Washington from our international conference, then uh, some of them might be here. Some other folks might be here. We're not sure yet uh, on that. I'd like to say and welcome Lou here hey, and Donna. Know. She didn't move back, unfortunately. We got to work on her a little bit, twist her arm a little bit more. Um, Lou and Mar were in Kentucky. And by way of video, I'm going to just take a minute and say, Hi, Marv, I miss you. They're ganging up on me. Please come and help. 
tomorrow. Happy birthday tomorrow, Marv. Amen. You know, Monday is his birthday, and he's going to do it. We need to pray for him because he's going through some things physically that, uh, and uh, not only physically, but work-wise. Uh, he's just swamped. He couldn't get away, so he can't be with us, but uh, he's gone through some things physically that, that we need to pray for God to heal in that. And uh, so let's pray for them. And then I have one other announcement this morning. Father, we thank you for, Lord, this time where we can pray, Lord, for all those who are gone from us. Lord, for various reasons. Lord, where they're getting fed at conferences and where, where they're just ministering, Lord Jesus, to people. And, and Lord, that their, their hearts are, are in the right this morning. And Father, right now we pray for Mark. Yes. Lord, my good friend who needs your touch. Yes. And Lord, right now reach down and move move upon him. Yes. Touch him in his body. Yes. Lord, release, Lord, what needs to be released. And Lord, right now begin to heal what needs to begin to heal, yes. Lord, so that he can walk and move, Lord in a attitude of praising you for what you've done. And Lord, right now, we just give you thanks for him, and we give you thanks for his life, and right now we just give you praise that we can support our brother during this time, and, and Lord, that we can keep praying for him. And Lord, that you would just, right now, bless him abundantly above all that he can even ask for. Father, that he would know that there are people here that love him and that care for him. And Father, right now, we just pronounce that blessing upon him. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. And by the way, speaking of birthdays, <laughs> happy birthday to you. situation go and <coughs> that uh, Anamosa lost her pastors um, last week and um, they abruptly resigned and moved to Arizona. Oh. So uh, it was uh, it's been interesting. So Mike is going to help fill in with with that. Between us and Cedar Rapids and Independence, we're going to fill into that church until they appoint a permanent pastor there. So uh, we want to pray for them. Uh, Anamosa Church this morning. And matter of fact, uh, Bill Black is there this morning ministering and moving. And then also, as we pray for the Anamosa Church, uh, Lou told me this morning that her pastor down in Kentucky, his father passed away last night. So we, we want to pray for that church. Amen. Kentucky. If there's any church that we need to pray for, it's that church down in Kentucky. They got Marvin Luke. <laughs> yeah, huh? Oh, 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 just Marv? Just Marv. Oh, oh. See, Marv, I need you. So uh, we're going to pray. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we just pray for the church down in Kentucky and, Lord, that pastor who's lost his father, Lord, that you would touch him and that you would move up on that church. And Lord, that your spirit would come down in comfort and love and glory. And Lord, that you would magnify yourself. And Father, Lord, as you magnify yourself, Lord, that there would be a great peace of the Holy Spirit that would come over that place and over that pastor. And your touch would move upon him during this time. And Lord, that you would encourage that whole place. And that whole place would come and support and lift up that pastor during the time, Lord, that he needs lifting up. Yes. 
Father, we pray for the church in Anamosa, Lord, that situation. Lord, bring the right person there of your will. And Lord, we give you full control over that. And Lord, we pray that you would just move, Lord, by your spirit in that church. And Lord, that you would glorify yourself, Lord, as, as you would be magnified. Lord, bring that church into being, Lord, something of a pillar of that community, Lord, for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And Father, we just praise you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 We're going to let the kids go to their time together. <clears throat> I uh, will say to you something totally honest, and that is, is simply that uh, there are times where the subject that I'm going to speak about this morning, I would have rather been beat than speak on. But I'm not ashamed anymore to speak on the subject because the subject is not an option with God. But I also want to come at it from a different point of view than what you expect. Okay? Are we all right? I don't know if we got anybody for Sunday school. Yeah. Yeah, Brandon and... Is it Brandon? Yeah, it's Brandon and Rachel. Uh oh. I think they're. Uh... I thought we were on the 19th. No, nope, you're the 7th. Oh. Well, that's all, that's all right. Bring them back in. They can come in with us. Bring them back in. We'll be we'll back. back. <laughs> oh, oh, they'd rather go back and play with the kids. I see. <laughs> <laughs> now I know how much I mean. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> No wonder they're so quiet. There, there's something going on. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh. Oh, there they go. They're warming up now. Um, but I, there, there were times where I'd rather have been beaten, and it's because of perception I got when I some 40 years ago from, from somebody, but I'm learning something. And it, it's a maturity that's come a little bit into my life is if I don't tell you everything that the word has to offer, then I'm in the wrong and I will be judged for it. And I, I say that because we've talked about five power words of infancy. The first one was repentance. The second one was praise. The third one was worship. And this morning we get to that word offering. Offering. What is an offering? What is a tithe? What is all this kind of thing? And as I, I began to look at this, I began to see offering in a different perspective than just money. And that's exactly how I want to approach this this morning. And I'm going to go to a scripture that might seem off base a little bit, uh, but, but we'll get there, okay? And that's in Philippians chapter 4. Starting in verse 14, there's a conversation that Paul begins to have with the Philippian church, and as he's out ministering, he comes into a crisis crisis in that he had some needs that needed to be supplied and the Philippian church sends somebody to supply his need. And as he sends, as they send somebody to supply his need, Paul responds this way in Philippians 4.14-20. 4, Nevertheless, you have done well that you shared in my distress. Now you Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church shared with me concerning giving and receiving but you only. For even in Thessalonica, 
You sin aid once and again for my necessities. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Epaphroditus the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice well-pleasing to God. And God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Jesus Christ Jesus. Now to our God and Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Father, we thank you for your word. Open up, Lord, our eyes and our ears and our hearts to hear and listen. Father, we just right now present this all before you. Let nothing be said that is not of you. And Lord, move by your spirit to do everything that you would have done this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I want to take a few minutes to deal with four fourth power word, which is offering, leading into intimacy. When most preachers talk about offering or tithing, the first thing everybody does is reaches for their wallet. A lot more to it than that. And I thank God for our tithers in our church because they're following the will of God. I, I really do. I thank God that, that God is richly blessing this church through your tithing in your offering. But I want to talk and bring this around kind of like an end around on what tithing really is. Because we've got a misconception that tithing only involves your money. When they would bring their <coughs> offering to the, the priest, they would bring an offering of one-tenth of everything they had. <laughs> Meaning more than just money. If you want to get intimate with God, you need to begin to tithe in every area of your life. Faithful giving in the financial area is a vital <clears throat> step to intimacy with Jesus, I agree. And yes, it needs to be done. And I don't preach about it a lot. Because, quite frankly, most of you know what you need to do and are doing it. Okay, if you don't know, then you need to begin to learn about it and ask, and we'll, we'll, I'll gladly tell you. And if any of you run into be a millionaire next week, you won't have to bring your offering to the church, I'll come and get it. You know, it's just that, that bad. But here's, here's the thing that I want to speak about. Financial giving is only the beginning. There's a principle here that speaks of everything. Tithing should do with everything that we have and everything that we are, not just our finances. We live in a world that has 24 hours in a day. Would you agree with that? Therefore, we need to look, and this morning is where I want to look at, the area of principles or offerings or tithings in the area of your time. If we have 24 hours in a day and you're actually tithing in the way the Word of God says, that means that you need to give two hours and 24 minutes a day to God. How many of us are doing it? Whoa. 24. Two hours, 24 minutes. How many of us are doing it? That's just our time. That doesn't include our offering. Ooh. Now, now I'm, I'm messing with even more than what I am if I mess with your finances, ain't I? Because two hours and 24 minutes a day beginning to give to God as your tithe. <coughs> Doing things. What are you doing for God? What are you doing for other people? See, your tithes and offering can be pretty simple. And it can be expressed in many different ways. But how many of us spent 2.4 hours a day with Jesus? 
How many of us spend two hours and 24 minutes a day? When the Lord started speaking to me about this subject, I told the Lord, Lord, I don't even spend two hours and 24 minutes a day. And the Lord said, well, get there. Well, how do I get there, Lord? I'm too busy. Learn how to carve a little bit more time. And if you can't get there right away, start in small increments. <coughs> Some of us take two minutes a day with God and we think we're all right. Well, that two minutes needs to become four. If you're at four minutes, it needs to become eight. And gradually work your way up to, your, to a point of spending your time of two hours and 24 minutes with God a day. Boy, it's quiet in here this morning. Because I'm, I'm, I'm different, dealing with this for, in a different point of view. Probably some of you never heard this before. But it's true. It's true. If we would just come to spend just the tithe of our time with Jesus, how much more will we be intimate with Him? How much more will we come into His presence? God, I'm just coming to spend a few minutes with you. And let me tell you something. You ain't got enough problems to fill two hours and 24 minutes. So some of that's going to have to be praised. And when you begin to praise him, what you've got in that two hours and 24 minutes of complaining will go down drastically. From that, I want to read you a story that many preachers misinterpret. And they misinterpret it because they only give you a partial view of it. If you have a flat tire, most of that tire looks okay. Only one side, the bottom, looks flat. Because you roll the tire and all of a sudden, what looked good is now flat. And what looked flat is now good. But it doesn't roll well doesn't work. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, is the same way. I don't want you to look at this in the money perspective, even though it involves that. I want you to look at this in your perspective. I want you to look at this not from the point of saying, oh, i got to give my money. And one of the reasons, I'll be honest with you, one of the reasons why I don't speak about tithing is first church I got to, and I became pastor of, I walked in and I spoke about tithing. And somebody came up to me and grabbed me and said, you don't know, all the church wants is money, all the church wants is this, all the church wants is that. And quite frankly, I gave them a flat tire view of Malachi chapter 3. And I don't want to do that this morning for you, because I want you to understand a full perspective. Listen to this in Malachi chapter 3. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that you bring your tithe, that there may be food in my house. What kind of food? Physical, spiritual, emotional, every kind of food. Well, why don't I just give my money and they can buy it? No, God doesn't want just your money. He wants you. That there may be food in my house. And try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. Listen to this. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. Flat tire of you. Well, if you give God $10, he's going to bring you 100 No. What God says, if you give yourself to me, I'm going to bless you, and I'm going to open up the windows and pour blessing down upon you. The windows of heaven and pour it out on you such that ye, there will be not enough room to receive it. You want to be blessed and be dancing down the aisles, you begin to use your life as a tithe. 
you begin to get with Jesus and give him that tithe of two hours and 24 minutes a day. And I'm saying, and I'll be honest with you, okay? I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. There's very few people that even tithe of their time, even pastors today. And I'll be honest with you, another area, I don't make it sometimes. So you're not alone. You're in the majority. The problem is, we need to come to a point where the minority becomes the majority in the church today by giving to the Lord. If every one of us begin giving to the Lord and every one of us became more intimate with God, then God's going to what? Draw people to you. And this church wouldn't be able to contain the people because the Spirit of God would be so strong in this place. And believe me, the devil couldn't get in because the Spirit of God would chase him out before you around this place. There would be such a spirit of the Holy Spirit that, that the devil couldn't even come close. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. You see that? Spirit of God come down on you. Let me tell you, if the Spirit of God is moving on you and, and on, the devourer can't come near you. So that he will not destroy the fruit of your ground. This is holy ground. I'm standing on holy ground. Everything I do will be fruitful because I'm standing on holy ground. I step, and every step I take is what? Holy. Because the Spirit of God begins to move within me. Nor shall the vine fail to bear fruit for you in the field. I want to take just, just a moment to talk about that. Because <coughs> we've often interpreted that as, and, and it's a good interpretation, I don't, I don't want to say anything about negative about it, and, and so understand it. that the fruit of the vine will not uh, or will yield fruit. Hear me. If I am connected to the vine and I become a branch and I am connected in intimacy with Jesus, I will bear fruit. If my branch is barren, I need to connect back to the vine. So there's more than just the money aspect of this. It's the spiritual aspect of the presence of God moving within you. And all nations will call you blessed, for you will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Attitudes to overcome. Any of you been with a two-year-old recently? Any of you watched a two-year-old pick something up that they shouldn't have, and you went over to take it away from them, and the first attitude you got is, MINE! MINE! I'm not going to share it. I'm not going to give it. I'm not going to do anything with it because it's mine. You know what? God says spiritually we've got a lot of two-year-olds in the church. Uh-oh. Mine. It's the attitude of mine. We like to tell others that we have it all together when it comes to offering until, first one, God decides to take away one of our most coveted attitudes that does not glorify Him. God, are you sure? How many, how many of us have some attitudes that don't glorify Him and 
God says, okay, it's time to strip away this attitude, and, 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 and we say, whoa, 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 let's talk about this, God. This, is, this, this isn't what I, I came for. I've got it all together with you, but Lord, uh, don't take anything that I like away. In other words, don't send me to bed without my eyes cream. But for some of you, popcorn. There are some popcorn holics in this place, I, I will admit. Or the second thing is we decide that the offering that Jesus desires for us to give is too much. Lord, I don't want to give that much. The Lord says, do it. I'm learning something, and, and this is this is a learning process for me as well. I'm, I'll, I'll just be honest with you. Many of you who know me and for years I, I, I led my life this way. We need this in the church. And my first response was we can't afford it. I ain't paying that for it. Donna knows. Lou knows. They taught me, and these two that are here this morning, I'm glad Lou's here this morning because I'll, I'll confess something. These two taught me to shut up and listen to God. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> because, you know, I, I just get the funny look, and I think Lou left this blessing with, with Donna. <laughs> <laughs> the blessing of me well that's a burden but the, first, the, the look the look that comes and then they would just roll their eyes it's not your problem it's God and God is recently <coughs> allowing me to kind of let go <coughs> and when God says do something I do it And sometimes the Lord speaks to me to do something, and then I'll tell you guys, and then I say that. Because I need to realize that it's not my problem, it's God's. And let me tell you something else. Since these two ladies, and you need to give them a great gratitude of thanks and praise, because since these two ladies are teaching me this thing, about loosening up and not worry about mine so much, God has blessed this church tremendously. Amen. Thomas. Amen. And and uh, I, I I I'm very conservative. Matter of fact, my middle name for most of you is Jimmy. Uh, okay, you got it. <laughs> but God's saying, if you're going to receive, you've got to listen. Now, I, I'm presenting this in, in my life in a financial way. But how many of us pre can present that in a physical way? Lord, I don't want to do it. it, it it's going to take me a little bit of time. It's going to take me some effort. No, no, God. No, ah, uh, no, 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 no. My easy, ah, uh, I hear my easy chair calling. God says, wait a minute, I'm speaking to you. Don't be cheap with your life. Give it back to God. Mine. I've got to overcome that. Especially when God, we, we tell God it's too much. Look at 1 Chronicles 29, verses 11 and 12. For yours, O oh Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory, the victory, and the majesty. For all that is in heaven and earth is yours. Turn to bite and say, it's God's. It's God's. Yours is the kingdom, O oh Lord. And you are exalted as head over all. Both riches and honor come from you. You reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. See, offering, tithing, 
all that kind of things, if you want to be intimate with God, it's not a matter of mine, it's a matter of all. You look at Malachi chapter 10, bring all your tithe. This means our offering should include everything. Everything. Cars, clothes, furniture, houses, books, computers. And I put books in there and I'll explain that in a minute. Computers, checkbooks, credit cards, it all belongs to Jesus. And let me tell you, let me make this caveat. That doesn't mean that we're to let people take advantage of us. Amen. I got to complaining the other day because I looked for Ken's books before he got here that I had and I knew he had signed them for me and I found out that I had lent <laughs> them out and realized that I had lent them out but they weren't returned to me. And I went on a stupor about how many books have I lent out that people did not return to me. And I just went on and complained and complained and complained. And finally, I, I started to deal with it in my mind, and, and it, it started to, to overwhelm me and, and consume me. Because I was angry about what I was losing rather than what I was giving. And the Lord said, shut up. I said, well, okay, Lord. I said, well, what do I do? He said, don't do anything. And so Ken got here, and he knew what had happened. And Missy, his wife, is no slouch by anything. And, and so what happens is I walk back, and I said, he says, I need two more copies of the books. And what, what happens is they come back to me. If you give it away, it will come back. And the Lord, what I do, and, and a lot of times, if, if you get a book from me sometimes, and if it's one of my favorite, it, it's marked up. It's color. It's very colorful because I use markers to mark things. And the Lord said, now I want you to reread his books and only mark in areas where you need to improve. Because most of us just mark everything. And so now I've got a job, the Lord's given me a job, as part of my tithing in my time. Reread his books and just mark the things I need to improve. and begin to give those things to him. Sometimes we think we own what we own, or sometimes when we think what we own is threatened, the truth is, it's not ours in the first place. Everything that we own, even the breath that we take, belongs to God. Why are we so worried about it? Why are we so worried about it? I come... Oh gosh, the church is going to go broke. What if nobody ties next week? What if this happens? Oh, and I'm we're all worried about that. It's not my problem, it's God's. Right. When we're moving into intimacy with Jesus, we'll clearly hear him tell us when, where, and how to use our resources that he has given to us. And when God's beginning to speak with me, I'm beginning to open my mouth before I can shut it and remove the blessing of God off this church by my mind. Are you doing the same thing in some of the areas of your life? What's the value of all? See, we like Philippians 4.19. We love Philippians 4.19. And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And we quote that a lot. We, oh, that's one, of our, my, that's one of my favorite scriptures. That God can supply all my need. But there's more to it. Amen. And it's Philippians 4.18. 
Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Aphroditus the things which were sent from you as a sweet smelling aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well pleasing to God. In other words, what were they doing? They were listening. The Philippian church was listening to God and said, When you told to do something, do it. And the Philippian church began to do it, even to the point of their own sacrifice. And God said to the Philippian church, You do it. And as God said to the Philippian church, and they did, God began to what? Bless the Philippian church. And they had more than enough themselves because they were willing to give what they had. There's many stories in the Word. The widow and the mite of flour. It never ended. Think about where God has provided for you because you were faithful to Him. That's tight. The relationship between these two verses is pretty subtle. And it's very easy to miss. Paul tells the Philippian church, I've received your sacrificial gift. Which is in next week, or not in next week, two weeks, because we're going to honor mothers next week. <coughs> Paul tells, I've received your sacrificial gift. Thank you. Thank you. I'm abounding now. I am blessed now. And then he tells them, since they have given, their needs will be supplied. And if you look at the Philippian church, when they begin to give the church, give out of their gift, give out from what they had, God begin to supply their needs. In the past two years, I, I looked it up, in the past two years, this church has done some things that are impossible man. I mean, we have helped people in financial ways that are amazing. And I'm not talking about hundreds, I'm talking about thousands. Where I would have said no, God said yes. We have given away two cars. I would have said no. God said yes. And I'm bringing, we have put new, by the way, here's where, where the blessing comes in. We have put new central air in the sanctuary that we're going to enjoy this summer. <laughs> and God has blessed this church in so much that we're carrying a balance. When I heard it yesterday, I said, well, we, we may have a couple hundred in the bank. No, we got 10 times that. says do something, do it. He won't let you down. That's right. He won't let you down. Now that doesn't mean that we're going to go out and spend it crazily, but you know, God, that's another situation. I know what's coming. I know what's coming. Now I, I believe firmly that God's got a situation where he's going to build up the money in this church because this church is not going to be this church very much. We're going to be in a different place. Why? Because God's bringing you in. The presence of God is going to move. And you know what? When it's time, we'll have money to pay for it. Two years ago, you would ask me that question, you know, I said, where are we going to get the money? Not my problem. <coughs> I'm learning not my problem is God's problem. <coughs> See, that's the subtle difference between 18 and 19. Paul says, I've received the gift in 18. And he said, now you're going to be blessed in 19. You've done what you were told to do. See the correlation? Philippians had an intimate, trusting relationship with the Lord. Do you really have that intimate, trusting relationship with the Lord to go out and step out on faith? 
I tell you, I'm scared when I see people walking in faith. But I see it every day. And I see it in small ways and big ways. Some of you have jobs that there's no income unless things happen. That's walking in faith. I sat down with with Ken and, and Missy this week, and, and we began to talk about the walk of faith and what he left, because he left a pretty significant church, two of them actually, making a good salary. And he says, I don't have that. I have to walk and leave and say. And I said, I don't know as if I could do that. And he said, yeah, he told me, yes, you can. And God's going to allow you to begin to, to do some of those things. And I said, well, Lord, uh, not right now. And the Lord <laughs> says, well, it's coming. But as long as it, it's coming with me, here's, here's the news flash. You ready? If God sends it to the pastor, it's coming to you next. It's flowing down. The offering involves a few things. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 through 9, but this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So that each one of you give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you, always having all sufficiency in all things, may have an abundance for every good work. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. And before I give you the three things that offering involves, let me tell you one thing that happened in my life. And I got angry over it, Didn't, and it was a physical anger, and it was wrong. Okay? But yet, in the same token, it was right. There was a lady that I ran across that put a dollar bill in the offering. And she was complaining how much that dollar bill meant to her. And how much of a sacrifice it was to make for her to put a dollar in the offering. But yet she walked in with a five dollar Starbucks coffee in her hand. And she just went on and went on and went on. I went to the offering bucket and I was angry about it. So I picked up that dollar bill and I gave it back to her and I said, apparently you need this more than God needs it. And I gave it back to her. And she said, wow! Let me tell you something. If you're not willing to give freely and of a cheerful heart, then it doesn't, you might as well keep it. You might as well keep it. And I'm understanding that because offering involves three important things. The first thing it involves is the purpose of your heart. What's the motive or purpose of your heart? Are you giving it to bless? Are you giving it so that there would be meat in the house of God? Help folks? What are you using it for? Offering involves effort. Sowing and reaping. you got to put some effort into it. You get out of God what you put into it. You can come to church and get absolutely nothing out of it because you don't put anything into it. You can walk with Jesus all you want. But if you're not putting anything, your life into it, your heart into it, what Jesus has for you, you will get nothing out of it. And the third one is probably the, you know, we think that offering involves purpose of the heart is big, and we think that offering involves effort is big. Here's the third one, and it's probably the biggest of all. Offering involves trust. Trusting God to be who God said he was and to do what he said he was.
Jeremiah 24, 6, 7. For I will set my eyes on them for good, and I will bring them back to this land, and I will build them up and not pull them down, and I will plant them and not pluck them up. Then will I give them a heart to know me, that I am the Lord, and they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return to me with their full <coughs> What is tithing? Tithing is just giving back to God what he already owns. Tithing is giving back to God what he already owns. They shall be my people, and I will be. church. That should be an underlying theme of this church. We are his people. And he is our God. And let him have his way as he does what he needs to do. The blessing and honor. Blessing and honor coming as God moves. We will see the storehouse and the windows open in a blessing. Yeah, tie. I'm not against that. I'm not limiting it one bit. You need to tie financially. But more so, you need to tie everything that you have, everything that you are. If you have an ability and somebody else doesn't, hide that ability. Because that's what God has asked us to do. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We give you glory and we give you honor and we give you praise. Now, Father, let us come into an attitude that we understand. that you're teaching us to give. And Lord, not to give so that we receive, but to give so that you can bless not only the one that we're giving to, but that you would bless us ways that we don't even understand. Father, we just give you glory, honor, and praise for that. In Jesus' name we pray.
bows, every head is bowed, and every eye is closed. Father, we give you honor, glory, and praise for your word, your witness, and your testimony. I thank you for this, your faithful congregation, and I ask you to place your hand of mercy and blessing upon each and every one of them, especially on the Sister Teresa, as today's her birthday. Lord, just draw her closer to you than she's ever been before in this next year to come. Father, increase your word in us that we may give you of all that we have, and not just this or that. Father, I commit this congregation into your hand. I ask you to take them safely home, bring them safely back again at the appointed time. In Jesus' name, and the church said, Amen. Amen. Shake somebody while you're friendly.